Good evening and a warm welcome to Big Budget Business, where we highlight the lives of prolific young people making strides in their respective fields. Now, with everything that's going on in the world, what with the COVID-19 pandemic and all the crises that we face, we thought it fit today to speak about mental health and wellness. And today we have independent therapist, consultant, and mental health expert Chanel Munyere Nikolic to speak to us today about these matters. Chanel, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you. Um, before we get, get into it, let me remind you that we are live, so we will share a link that you can click on to call in. And please keep your, com your comments and questions coming if you have anything that you'd like to ask our guest. Now, before we get into the meat of the matter, please just tell us a bit about Chanel. What is your background? Um, anything that you'd like to share about yourself? Okay. Um, my name is Chanel Nayang Manyere Nikolic, as you said, and I'm a village girl from Khabani. And I, I was born and bred in Botswana. And I went to my high school in Lehigh Academy and I carried on to do my undergrad in Port Elizabeth in Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, okay. where I did my um, both my uh, um, undergrad, bachelor and my honors, where I carried on to do my master in the Netherlands, uh, Rotterdam. All right. So, yeah. Well, that's, that's great. That's great. So maybe share with us about um, why exactly you got into the mental health space and um, the work that you do within this uh, mental health space? Okay, well, it all started off, I was initially supposed to study financial planning, and then um, somehow I just wasn't gelling with my accounting that well. <laughs> so then I was like, you know what, there's more to uh, numbers, and I actually do well with the human behavior and getting to listen to people, such as when my friends share stories, I would be the one they'd kind of come to. So. Psychology also got to fascinate me with like uh, the diagnosis and hearing and seeing people just like out there and exhibiting awkward behaviors. So I wanted to study about that and know more and how to help with that. So it was really the humanistic element that, that got you into this space. Yes. Oh, that's great. So would you say you're a people's person? I am a people's person <laughs> and people do call me a social butterfly okay. the most. So yeah. Well, that's great. Um, so maybe for our, our viewers at home, explain the term mental health as well as any of the ailments that might be associated with it. Okay, so with mental health is a very broad uh, topic. Mental health is a holistic view of well-being. Okay. So when I speak of holistic, I'm talking about the physical and the spiritual as well as the mental psyche and so forth, which helps with people getting to know and reach a level of self-actualization. So with mental health, it has to do with, um, like I said, behaviors that are exhibited that may be harmful yes. to people or not socially acceptable and people that other people don't understand so mental health is holistic and it's about well-being and different exhibited behaviors okay all right what i picked up from there was okay uh, it's a holistic thing so in as much as it's mental it's not just got to do with uh, the brain per se but also the behaviors the actions that we have and we exhibit as individuals exactly because right. these coincide yeah. they coincide okay and um, i did ask about um you know the various ailments maybe take us through some of the different ailments or di you did talk about diagnostics mm -hmm. when we got got uh, the introduction so maybe tell us about, you know, the differences. Some will say uh, bipolar, some will say this, mm -hmm. some will say that. Maybe speak to that. Okay, well, um, they ex these behaviors, they exhibit differently in different situations, such as maybe in the workplace, you will have a person who has uh, depression, who will be diagnosed with depression. Okay. So with that, you can have like low mood effect. So with uh, that, that means people can have a sense of nervousness, irritability, or just lessened work productivity. So with a person like that, like I said, in the workplace now, um, you would possibly see irritability, like you just be like your 
bothering this person or get your job done and it's just like ah hey but what's the point Absolutely. so these are the symptoms that fall within that or sometimes it's really fatigue plays a big part and if you take it to another setting such as maybe a school setting you will be able to see these symptoms exhibited fatigue a child is not interested in learning or maybe um, the whole aspect of what is the point feeling a sense of worthlessness and so forth bipolar disorder it's either up or down just to put it in layman terms okay um, you have manic people whereby it's just extreme and they're just like on the go and very high pitch high energy okay. and then um, it goes down to uh, uh, a low effect whereby the person now feels like just sad and melancholic yes. and yeah it's just a downer at that point so mm. there's different there's a big diagnostic criteria okay. manual that we use okay. it has so many diagnoses in there so that's why when people get to say like hey i'm depressed it's like but there's a lot that goes into that that we check off in the counseling field and so forth okay all right um wow well, you see it, it can also cut across all of these because I feel, I feel like as human beings sometimes, or maybe let me speak for myself, there may be times where, of course, you get that that natural high mm -hmm. and then you get that melan melan uh, melancholy, you feel very low and then there's also that time where you get into something and I'm sure a lot of young entrepreneurs out there and people within the professional fields, um, when you start something and perhaps when you're just about to finish it, you feel like, what is the point? Yeah. And you, you slack, you stop. Um, maybe as we go on, we'll speak about um, what coping mechanisms we can use for that because it's a lot of burnout that right. we can experience. Let me remind our viewers at home that we are live. We will share a link with you. Um, I think it's, it's probably been shared. You can click on that link to call in and speak to Chanel Munyere Nikolic, or to me, Big Budget, about mental health and wellness issues. Um, you can also keep your comments coming. Um, we have one already there from Natasha A. Okay. She says, very inspirational. So you've already got fans out there. Uh, so let's, let's talk a bit more about um, maybe coping strategies for this depression. Um, what do you think one can do to, to work with such? Because depression tends to lead to even things like suicide, right? Right, mm. right. And since we are living in unprecedented uh, crisis time where we have corona, people do tend to feel more low moods and effects. Um, you were talking about worth and you're just like, what's the point in carrying on? So then it's like, okay, I don't want to do this because you some other people crush themselves actually before they even get ahead. So then that's already having ideologies of just negativity. So I would, I, obviously would say let's go for counseling you know okay. reach out and this is uh corona times have brought out uh it's an extraordinary time to now bring together communities and have open dialogues about what's really happening with somebody because people are going through a lot of isolation so and then that makes a person very withdrawn Absolutely. go for counseling reach out and then there's also like the coping mechanisms that are out there uh, that could be even instilled in workplaces you know and depression also can be harbored by something that is happen to you yes. such as bullying in the workplace and at home which I have been seeing a lot of that uh, people talking about so reach out companies could have wellness people you know and wellness is everywhere even it's intrinsic you know you have to in introspect as well so go for counseling and you will get those cop coping strategies as well um, yeah thank you so much for that you did mention now it's intrinsic and I think for a lot of people um, who tend to have hopes and goals objectives and want to achieve you find yourself being your own worst or harshest critic right you know and and it, it's sometimes difficult when you feel you failed yourself and maybe some people out there might be thinking wow this person is doing amazing things but you within yourself are feeling like, no, I'm not doing enough. Or perhaps I've failed myself because I've set my targets a bit too high. 
what can we do to work on ourselves intrinsically? Of course, you did mention uh, counseling, but right. in the event that we've done that and we still somewhat feel here and there that it's difficult, what can we do? Well, we could, you could do choose exercise. Okay. I would say a change okay. in routine of um, your daily living mm -hmm. is, is something that you could look up on. If you see that, okay, I'm waking up and um, I'm not brushing my teeth, try brush those teeth, you know, mm -hmm. and then that smile will initiate and it will come through. Um, if you feel like, hey, let me play a song in the morning, change the routine, it's part of um, things that you, you will make you upbeat and exercise as well that's good like i said it's a holistic perspective whereby the mind and the physical do work together as well and meditation which also brings in the spiritual side of it that's also something that's big and upcoming some people are doing yoga pilates and so forth and just the quiet meditation we have this technique in therapy it's called the breathing technique Breathing. So that one is, it's very simple, but yeah, that's what people could do for themselves. Just, yeah. Wow, this takes takes us back to what you said in the beginning. You said mental wellness or mental health is a holistic aspect of this. So you did mention that there's the spiritual side, mm -hmm. meditation, you did mention the physical, yeah. gym, which I feel I have to take a bit more seriously. Okay. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I, I like that you say that. So there's multiple ways that we can try and address this. For yourself, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's speak a bit about um, the COVID-19 pandemic and um, what your experience has been since you're in the field with respect to, you know, workforces and individuals, people, basically, how... Um, there have been job losses. How do you think people have been dealing with that? Um, that is, it's, it's been a very hectic time, I would say, just speaking for myself and just other people. And having to be a, a therapist, do you get to see, um, I've done outreaches with schools and so forth, where, you know, I feel it, it needs to be institutionalized, where there has to be mental health awareness programs. Okay. There also has to be uh, assistant programs. There has to be trainings for like supervisors and, and, and employers so that they could be able to trickle down all that knowledge into their people because, you know, once you have somebody who is feeling optimistic then you will get optimistic results like and, and and good results at the end of it so they need to the government really needs to get uh mental health and well being into the school systems into the corporate world into the government itself as well and um that's just just put it out there, more awareness, you awareness. know, and not just awareness of, oh, mental health is taking care of yourself. The trainings, you know, the, the programs, they're out there, the therapists. And uh, another uh, thing I would like to say to people is that when you go to a therapist, because I've seen there's a lot of uh, pop-up therapists that come out, please do ask for their credentials. Please do ask so you know that who is helping you and if they actually do have the right qualifications because we, we really take mental health very seriously. And yeah, people should know who is assisting them in that moment in time. Mm -hmm. So I can't just go to anyone because they claim to be a therapist. Yeah. Um, is your industry regulated? Do, uh, do you have a regulatory body? There is uh, many bodies. There's also one at the University of Botswana. There's the health. Also, we have uh, the health board okay. and yeah, the registry also for uh, the clinical psychologist and so forth. Oh, wonderful. Okay, that's great. Uh, let me remind you all that we are live. Please keep your comments coming. If you have any questions for our mental health expert, maybe you're dealing with something. You don't have to be personal about it, but you can just ask your questions generally. Keep your comments coming. You can call in too. There's a link that you can click for you to call in and we'll speak to you because we're live. Um, we were talking about COVID-19 and, you know, what it's done. Um, I want us to touch on a very personal matter. Well, not personal, but um, a, a touching and pressing issue. Gender-based violence. What is your take on, on, on that issue? Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. I um, got carried away before. But that's one of the major playing um, uh, uh, 
I would say devastating things that have been happening um, where like I said there is isolation you know and people don't know who to reach out to and you are confined in a space with a person who is going to take away not just your uh, emotional well-being they take away their physical well-being so then you become a victim and then there's also the stereotype and the stigmas that follow with that where people your neighbors are like ha and it yes. becomes a spectacle so um, these Gender-based violence, it has been on a rise, but then just to say to the people, please let's break the stigma, let's break the stereotypes, and like they say, check on your strong friend, because mm -hmm. you never know what's really happening. You might not just have the physical bruises to show it, mm -hmm. but there's also the emotional bruises just to, to show for that. So it's really on the rise, and it's something that um, counselors, I would say most of the statistics have shown that, yeah, we're dealing with that a whole lot more than before. Mm -hmm. So at least there's, we're, we're sort of doing something about it. Yeah. Um, and I like how you introduced the community aspect to that, because as neighbors, you know, we, 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 we live in communities right. and societies, and we need to see that we address this together. <laughs> as a, a joint effort, sure. not just me and my family alone exactly. and my household. Uh, we have a question here uh, from Natasha A. Sekhe. She says, Ms. Chanel, what is the rational, calm, alternative way of dealing with anxiety in the workplace? Can you please touch base on that? Um, what is the rational, calm, alternative way of dealing with anxiety in the workplace? Okay. Um let me pick a very heightened situation okay. and then possibly you might have to get away from that mm -hmm. um, even if heightened or even minimal but because it's anxiety so you're it's basically like a person is really um, on edge so it's the breathing technique that I spoke of okay. that's the one I could just say you just find a quiet corner and then once you learn the technique of breathing and which is something you can read on as well anywhere um, you could google it you just take deep breaths find a quiet space you could go to a cubicle in your workplace or you could sit by your desk if you do have your place and then just do that breathing technique and then the mind body it gets you back into a blank state, which will help you regenerate and get back in there again. Well, thanks a lot for that. So I take it um, you've had an answer there. Here's a strategy or a mechanism that you can use um, in terms of breathing, breathing, finding a quiet place, bringing yourself back into the moment. Exactly. That helps a lot. Yes. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, I think um, another question here, you see our show really tries to get young people to venture into uh, business um, as an alternative means of, you know, income, obviously, and perhaps finding out that what their passions might be. Why would you say it's important for us, even before we embark on anything, to have this aspect of mental health within our minds and our consciences? Why should we deem it important rather than just riding the wave? Okay, because um, I would say... It's levels of, you know, there's work, right? So work, your workplace needs to show prod product. Yes. So the product is done by the human capital of workforce. Course. Of course. So if they're not okay, then there'll be high levels of absenteeism. Mm -hmm. There'll be uh, low work productivity. There'll also be uh, the employee turnover and it just won't gel. So if you get those, I mean, in a corporate level, you need your people to be happy because uh, uh, you need to make the customers happy, then the worker needs to be happy. Of course. So that's why I said, let's, let's get it into the workplaces where if you have a healthy mind helping, because I've heard Mobozwanahapeakere, we say, hey, you know, habaru tusesente, or, you know, motongaro temehile every day. You know, that's, it's cyclical. So having to change that aspect, it makes it happy and free flow, whereby I'm coming to see you as you're helping me at your workplace. And then I'm like, okay, then I gain a sense of smile if I was feeling low pass it on and then becomes kind of like a play it forward type of scenario. 
Wow. You know, this reminds me of something that we touched on on a previous episode. Um, we did speak about how as young people, when we get into business, we should think of um, how we can satisfy our workers' needs, mm -hmm. looking at uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Right. You need, you're starting, of course, with their physiological, mm -hmm. the safety, the security, so, all the way up yeah. to self-actualization. Right. So it's important for us, for us to understand that we're dealing with human beings. And human beings go through the most. Right. So we need to understand that we are meeting and addressing whatever challenges that they're all facing. Exactly. No, thank you so much for that. Um, I think if we get into a more macro uh, level, what would you say, um, what, what your opinion is uh, with how we are working together as a country? Communities, government, corporates, uh, individuals at home, families, what would you say we are doing well to address these social ail ailments that we're facing? Well, I feel like we're having the, um, like I said, the open dialogues, mm -hmm. such as like even being out here and having to talk to the people out there. Um, these are so much necessary because this helps with our uh, collective culture and being able to understand mental health really will open up a lot of uh, people. Let's say they've been very reserved and so forth and assist a lot of people with treatments and um, curbing the, the, the self-harm or harming of other people. So okay. I feel like um, now mental health is really coming up and people are, are learning to 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 um, bring it into their circle of, of knowledge so mm. yeah we're playing our part let's continue playing our part and yeah just be more self-aware mm. and of other people as well absolutely um, I think um, as youth there is the issue of um, substance abuse um, a lot of uh, people have been through phases in their lives where they've used this as a crutch. Mm -hmm. uh, they've used this as a, a coping mechanism. Um, with your experience in the field, can you maybe speak to us about substance abuse? Um, maybe, like I said, from a macro level here in Botswana, what your thoughts are, and then for the individual, um, how can you deal with substance abuse? It's mm -hmm. uh, quite the issue for a lot of young people. Yes. Yeah, so. For that, I'm actually with um, Drug Free is the New Cool. Uh, it's a campaign that has been going on by, um, done by Dumelo. And um, we have been reaching out. We did also go to Baisa Hall just to also reach out to uh, the children in the you know, in that age group, because we could tell that with the stats given that the, the drug abuse is on a rise. So, um, like we said, institutional, put it into uh, the schools as well. So it's really on the rise. There's rehabilitation centers okay. as well. And we also have started a, a focus group where we help with um, addicts that have come together and they want to talk about it. So um, those are also, we've started them, they're gonna be on the Sundays. And as well as having to do outreaches and so forth and there's rehabilitation centers and marina where i also used to work okay. has has that department with the psychology interns and so forth they assist with that so it's we're they're, we're really trying to curb it and also there's individual counseling that i also uh, give out to people myself so yeah all right so we have uh, another comment here from uh, taps Ashley Walcott and um, the comment is the therapy service prices are very high so how does an individual seek help without having to see a social worker referring to youth groups that don't have high income mm -hmm. to pay for sessions sometimes you need more than self hacks so really I think this is about you know accessibility from the monetary perspective right, mm. right. Um, there are free services and uh, people that who offer psychological services. I know from the top of my head, I also volunteer with them. Wow. It's on a network of mental health. Okay. Uh, you just give them a call. They're also on Facebook as well. And then they could also give you the necessary referrals. Mm -hmm. And I also give referrals because my number, I do put it out there. Okay. And then if somebody does explain their monetary problem, then I could just be able to refer them to 
the necessary places. There's mm -hmm. always somewhere and people willing to talk to people. So. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah. uh, the money issue shouldn't make me shy away from trying Please to get help. Please don't make it shy, make you shy away. Just really, like I said, reach out. There will always be an answer answer wonderful for you. and thank you for that there uh, taps Ashley Walcott um, you would you say that um, before I ask you this you did mention Botswana network, network of, of mental, mental health. health and they are on Facebook they are on Facebook okay wonderful so let's try and see how we can get in touch with them and then you did say there was the drugs are uh, uh, drug free is the new call Drug free is the new call. Yes, have you is. started social media campaigns for that? Yes, we have. Um, actually, the page is also on Facebook, and okay. the number is also there. So please feel feel free to give us a call as well. Absolutely. No, thank you so much for that. Now, um, let's talk about you. You're an independent consultant, a therapist, and an expert. If I would like to access your services, how can I reach you? Okay, so you can call my number, which is plus two six seven seven five two zero seven zero eight one, and also I have my Chanel Nikolic page on Facebook, and I'm also on LinkedIn as Chanel Nayang Munyere Nikolic. You can find me there, and as well as my numbers circulating on all those platforms as well, and that is also a number for WhatsApp, which is plus. 267-7623-6235. So that's where you can reach me. Once again, plus 267. Plus 267-7623-6235. All right. I think people are quite enjoying our conversation here because we have another one here from Natash. Uh, thanks so much for this. She says, some people, especially youth, resort to drugs because they think it's a better alternative to deal with mental health conditions. So how can you advise them? Are drugs the answer? Drugs, drugs are, are bad. Not. Drugs are bad. Drugs are kids. bad. Drugs are bad. <laughs> and I say that in the most uh, 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 serious manner because honestly, you feel like that's the only uh, outlet that you could go for. There's so many more that do not make you want to hurt yourself, that do not make you want to feel less lesser than or worthless because you have so much worth so please reach out there are people out there like us and even more that actually do care and so give therapy a try talk to someone confide in someone and see how you can get out of that hole because it just becomes a rabbit hole all right thanks for that before we continue um we've got to go for an ad break we will be right back please don't go anywhere All my enemies will suffer my wrath, but those of my household will enjoy my embrace. I refuse to let my weakness get the best of me. Be more hard and less attack. Right. Uh, welcome back to Big Budget Business. And we are speaking to Chanel Munere Nikolic, an independent consultant, therapist and mental uh, health expert. So we just wanted her to share her details with you again, because we do understand the gravity of mental health issues and how uh, it's important for us to deal with them uh, before it becomes something else. Uh, maybe share your contact details again. How can you be reached? Okay, so I'm also on Facebook on Chanel Nikolic, and I'm also on LinkedIn as well as um, the Facebook page, Let's Get Mental BW. Uh, my numbers are plus 267-7520-7081. And my WhatsApp number is plus 267-7623-6235. Right. Thank you so much for that. And we have a final comment here from Gaene Disebo, who says, thoroughly enjoying this session when it comes to issues of mental health and well-being, silence is the biggest driver 
of pain. Thank you so much for that, Guy. And I think that's a great thing for us to close our conversation with. Silence is the biggest driver of pain. So let's start talking about these issues that we face. Uh, Chanel, let me thank you so much for gracing our show. It's been a pleasure and highly informative session and engaging, as you can see. We look forward to having you once again. Thank you for having me. Most welcome. Right. Um, towards the end of the show, as you all know, we give you what we call a two-minute tip for young people in business. Now, we are very big on strategic planning for our businesses. And uh, when you undertake your strategic planning process, you may reach a point where you want to undertake market research. So we're going to give you four broad and fundamental types of market research that you can undertake. And remember that these are broad and all encompassing. And so you may find other specific types of market research underneath these broad realms. Number one, primary research. This is more of first-hand research or first-person research that you undertake yourself, uh, perhaps through direct interviews, surveys, and focus groups. Number two, secondary research. Secondary research refers to third party, second party or third party information that already exists. So you can consult ebooks, you can look at videos and find information that's already already available. And then number three, qualitative research. Qualitative research is basically the kind of research that has data and information which is a bit difficult to put in numbers, which is difficult to quantify. So this could be, for example, eliciting the thoughts and feelings that your market has with respect to your goods and services. So it's a bit difficult to put thoughts and feelings into numbers. That's qualitative research. And then lastly, quantitative research. Now, quantitative research is that kind of data and information that you can put in numerical format and then undertake further statistical analysis. Uh, this could be, for example, you looking at the various social media platforms and seeing where your following or your numbers are highest and then seeing, uh, analyzing that to see how you can direct your efforts towards your specific target market. So once again, the four broad types of market research, quantitative, qualitative, primary and secondary. It's been a wonderful show. Thank you so much for your time and for your engagement. From me, Big Budget, and the team that makes it happen, Black Network, Moana Pictures, it's good night and God bless. And never forget that you were born for so much more.